Welcome to online worship at University United Methodist Church in Austin, Texas. Friends, we start all of our services reminding each and every one of you that no matter who you are or where you are on your life journey or your faith journey, you are welcome here. Whether this is your first time joining us or you are with us every week, I just want to extend a warm welcome and appreciation for you being with us today. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Hey everyone, my name is Heather Green and I am the Associate Pastor for Children and Families. Today we will be continuing our sermon series, All Creatures Great and Small, and you will get to hear from our Associate Pastor, Reverend Earl Kim. He will be preaching on Psalm 23 and the Gospel of John, and his topic is sheep. And in celebration of Mother's Day, I invite you to join me now in a prayer for mothers and all women everywhere. Let us pray. Mother God, we give you thanks this day for mothers everywhere and for our own mothers. We thank you for those women who have joined you in eternity and whom we miss dearly here on earth. We thank you for every woman who is working day and night to raise her children right now. We thank you for all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. We thank you for the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care. We ask your comfort for the women who have lost a child to death and must carry on. May they be sustained and strengthened by your love. We thank you for all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own, but instead reached out to nurture and care for others. We pray today for those who have complicated relationship with their mothers. May you sustain them with your love and grace. Bless all women who serve as mothers in whatever way that may be. Through your son, Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. And now I invite you to join our music director, Alicia, as they lead us in our opening song.
Our first scripture reading for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down their life for the sheep. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He leads me beside quiet waters. If anyone is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. He restores my soul. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Believe in God, believe also in me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would not have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Our second scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. The Word of God for the people of God. Around this time of year, I frequently think of my grandmother. She passed away three years ago on April 28th. 
Sadly, I couldn't visit her in South Korea before she died and couldn't attend her funeral because of the pandemic. But I'm glad that she lived 95 years of long life and peacefully went back to God's embrace without any illness or trouble. Last week, I took time and reflected on my grandmother's life and legacy, weaving the pieces of my memories of her and the stories I've heard of her. Like most Koreans in her generation, my grandmother lived a life entangled with the turbulent modern history of Korea. During the Japanese occupation, my grandfather was forcibly taken to a coal mine. Many people like him died there in the harsh conditions of the forced labor camp. A total of 12 young men were taken from his small rural town, but only three, including my grandfather, came back alive. He luckily survived, but five years later, the Korean War broke out and separated my grandparents again. They reunited after the war, but my grandfather was no longer the person he used to be with all the traumas and inner wounds. Meanwhile, my grandmother had to make a living by doing anything. I heard how much she struggled. She had to travel by foot from market to market, from village to village, to sell some small goods carrying her baby on her back. She helplessly lost two of her children during the war. Years later, she could purchase small farmland to settle down, but still she had to work day and night to feed her family. In my memory, she always toiled away in a field. Her bag is badly hunched after years of intensive labor. Her, her son burned hands and rough feet are deformed, and the tips of her fingernails are always dark, with dirt stuck there. At a single glance, anyone could tell life didn't treat her nicely. True, people may see my grandmother's life as an uneasy life, with a series of tragic events, with no special achievements. But no matter how others see it, I'm quite sure her life was a good life, an inspiring life, because all through those years, she lived a life of genuine faith in Jesus, her good shepherd. How can I be sure about this? I'm sure just for one reason. She prayed every day. In her room, there were a small prayer table and a sitting mat where she could kneel down. On the table, she kept her old Bible, reading glasses, a cross, and some pictures. There was a picture of me and my wife taken in my previous church, and I'm sure if she were still alive, there must be a picture of our church on that table right now. I know she prayed ceaselessly. I know she prayed for her family. And I know it was in her prayer she found a way to hear the voice of her good shepherd, with whom she walked through all the darkest valleys of her life. It was in her prayer that she found a way to have contentment in poverty, to bear hope in despair, and to cultivate joy in suffering. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus teaches his disciples about the relationship between the Good Shepherd and the sheep. As he explains how good this shepherd is, interestingly, Jesus also repeatedly tells us that there is something sheep are always good at. He says when the shepherd calls the sheep, the sheep hear the voice. I know hearing doesn't sound like a special talent, but Jesus describes it 
in further detail. The sheep, in their hearing, do not passively stay still. Instead, they actively pay attention to the voice and discern it from other voices. This hearing is important on a journey through the wilderness, and sometimes the sheep's life depends on it when thieves and bandits try to call them out and take them. Yes, hearing matters, and it matters even more in times like this as we walk through the darkest valleys, the valleys of violence, division, and injustice. And hearing with attentiveness and discernment matters as we hear the voices that try to lead us astray, the voices of bigotry, fear, and hopelessness. Recently, I honestly feel lost sometimes, lost in the despair of our time. Whenever I think of my daughter who will be born soon, I feel afraid sometimes. I actually feel miserable whenever hearing about so many shootings and so many hate crimes against Asian Americans. But as I remembered my grandmother last week and thought about how she went through all the vicissitudes of her life, I became grateful. Grateful for her life and for her legacy of prayer. And I came to reaffirm my faith in the Good Shepherd who faithfully walked with her and is now walking with me. On the day my grandmother passed away, my father told me on the phone that right before the moment of my grandmother's passing, he prayed for her. And she responded with Amen in a very small voice. And that was her last word. How blessed it is to depart from this world listening to the family's farewell prayer and leaving Amen as the last word. I think this Amen encapsulates her whole life. Throughout her life, she faithfully heard the voice of the Good Shepherd and followed with Amen. So be it, my Good Shepherd, I hear your voice, and I will go with you. I imagine her last Amen also meant it. Faithful friends in Christ, who are we in this world? Above all the fancy theological arguments on being humans, what I cherish the most is the simple line found in the prayer of commendation that we often hear at the funeral and memorial services. It says, Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock. We are the sheep. And blessed are we who are gathering here as a flock and following the Good Shepherd with Amen today. Reflecting on my grandmother's life, one thing I can tell you with confidence is this. Our Shepherd is good, not because this Shepherd can magically transform the wilderness into green pastures instantly, but because this Shepherd takes the arduous journey of life beside us joins us in every joy and despair day by day, never stops searching for us when we are lost, and even lays down life for us. Therefore, when we trudge through the rocky valleys, looking for a patch of grass, and wander around the wilderness, searching for a puddle of water, it is our faith that we are on a journey of grace with the Good Shepherd toward the green pasture of love and wonders, toward the still waters of life and resurrection. May we hear the voice of our Good Shepherd always, not only in our prayers, but also in our worship, in our meditation, in our works of mercy, 
and even from one another. And may our life be the life of our man, a life of our formation, of the everlasting presence of God in every step of our way. So be it, my good shepherd. I hear your voice, and I will go with you. As we walk through the valley of the shadow of death in our lives, may this be our prayer. Amen. Today is to check out our e-connection. If you are not getting these emails, I encourage you to go to our website and sign up to receive this weekly newsletter. This will let you know everything that is going on in our church in every department, including children and families and youth and adult education. We also sometimes include important events that are happening in our community that we want to make you aware of. So please make sure that you're reading your e-connection and if you're not receiving it, to go to our website and sign up. And if you ever have any trouble, you can give our office director a call at the church and she will happily walk you through the process. Friends, I wanna remind you that none of this would happen without your gifts. None of these events that we advertise in e-connection would be possible without your help. So if you'd like to donate today, you can visit our website, uumc.org give, and there you will find a donate button. I wanna thank you again for joining us today. Receive now today's benediction. Go now on a journey of grace toward the green pasture of love and wonders, for the still waters of life and resurrection. Even though the mountains are high, bell is low. Let us keep listening and keep following. In the name of the one who is the way through the wilderness, the good shepherd, and the loving voice. Amen.